When we talk about the healing power of music, the focus is usually on the listener. But one local orchestra in New England is grounded in the idea that it can do a lot for the people playing there, too. The orchestra is called Me Too. No, not that Me Too. And it's made up of performers living with mental illness and those who support them. Its co-founder and music director, Ronald Brownstein, who was diagnosed with bipolar disorder in 1995, left behind a celebrated career as a conductor to create an environment for musicians like him, struggling to maintain good mental health. Their story is now the subject of a terrific new documentary. It's called Orchestrating Change. Ronald Brownstein joins me now, along with the executive director and co-founder of Me Too, who also happens to be his wife, Caroline Whitten. It's great to meet you, too. And congratulations on the film. It is spectacular. Thank you. So as I said, Ron, one of the most celebrated young conductors in the world. You're leading orchestras all over the world. 30 years old, diagnosed with bipolar. Your manager drops you. The classical com uh, uh, music community shuns you. And then all of a sudden, not all of a sudden, after a long and winding road, Me Too, why did you decide that was the place to land for you? Well, it wasn't that it ended the career um, in 1985. Um, I came back many times. Mm -hmm. I would have like five years off, great work, and then five years disasters. And um, But I kept coming back. Mm -hmm. But there was one point I actually hit the wall, and I felt I couldn't continue anymore. I couldn't put myself back together. And I decided, being bipolar, I would like to um, surround myself with people who understood, who got me, who understood um, how, what it's like to be bipolar and who could communicate with me and... And you with them. And nobody had ever done this before. There's nothing like this, correct? No, no. How did you get involved? <laughs> I know you ended up with him, but well, I mean... Well, I, I had a very serious crush on him at the time <laughs> uh, when he pitched this idea to me of, of starting something for people living with mental illness. And, uh, and I was out of a job at that point as well and said well let's 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 talk about it let's see what it could look like and crazy, personally crazy yeah it was, a, it was a crazy idea uh, but I took a lot of inspiration from the gay chorus movement actually uh -huh. in, in terms of just identifying a social movement um, that used music to kind of destigmatize uh, a community and and so we we made the leap you know we talk a lot about the stigma of mental illness on the show and trying to blow it away. And one of your players, uh, Dylan, who's a double bass player, uh, talked about his life in the film before joining the orchestra. Here's Dylan. Right before I joined the orchestra, I was doing terribly. I hadn't left the house in months. I told people I was a drug addict before I told them I had mental illness. Because they accepted that, and they weren't scared of that. I didn't feel like I was a part of the rest of the world. Like, I had somehow gotten lowered into a different class. Has it worked for the players? I'm going to talk about the audience in a minute, but has the stigma begun to erode for the men and women who've played with you, Ronald? Yes, in terms of self-esteem, in terms of confidence, um, just being in a stigma-free zone has just let them, you know, communicate with each other and form actually a family of of, of, of actually a family who play music together. You know, I read after the fact that there are no auditions. I mean, people, how is the quality so extraordinarily high? If you closed your eyes or if you didn't watch a film and didn't know mm -hmm. uh, who was playing the or essentially a bunch of amateurs who right. have a a amateurs, how is the quality of the music so high? Well, first of all, they're not judging each other. So they're, they're, not, they're not uptight about in the same way um, professional orchestras uh -huh. are. You know, they're not obsessed with um, perfection. They're more going for the message that the composer had in his imagination when he wrote the piece a hundred years ago. And um, the quality level is the people who come, um, come from all walks of life. And some of them are on a very, very high technical level. Mm -hmm. uh, we had one guy who was um, academy, um, a Grammy winner. A, gra a Grammy winner. <laughs> and we had several conservatory musicians, but a lot of them are not very advanced, but there's a lot of mem mentoring 
that goes well, along. It totally, with it. it totally comes through. And, you know, when you talk about trying to help eliminate the stigma for the players, there's no question that part of your goal is not just to work with the players, but to work with the audience mm. and have them have a better sense of what someone living with mental illness is like. Have you seen evidence of, I don't know if conversion is too strong a word, at least <laughs> movement on the part of the audience after they've been part of this? Well, immediately when you when you say this, I, I think back to a performance we gave at Shattuck Hospital mm. uh, in Jamaica Plain about three years ago. You and, have a lot of non-traditional settings. We played a yeah, lot yes, of non-traditional settings. And we were playing for the inpatient uh, psychiatric uh, group and big room full of people. And there was, you know, I introduced the orchestra and explained that we are people with and without mental illness, yeah. that about half of the people are living with schizophrenia, mm -hmm. addiction, bipolar disorder. And uh, we always do a Q&A with the audience. And so there was a, a young man, a patient on the front row, and he raised his hand and he said, you know, you said that half of the people in front of me have a mental illness, but I can't tell who they are. I said, exactly. I mean, that it really, it, it's very important. Just that visual, people don't understand. Why does a musician you don't who, know what it looks like. Why does a musician who doesn't have suffer from mental illness decide to join this orchestra? Um, well, I would say the easy answer is because they want to work with Ronald Brownstein. He's a great <laughs> conductor and really creates such a wonderful rehearsal atmosphere. But I think another draw is those untraditional concert venues. You, we get to go I mean, get prisons to and, go into prisons and hospitals and great. you know so many as a when you're trained as a professional musician, you perform a lot of times on a stage with the lights down and there's really no That's connection other than That's the applause. Point to the audience, and, they, they, they and we also, connect. They also get a lot from ha having us come and play for them, you know, in these places that don't have a lot of beauty in them, yeah. you know, correction. It. But we also get a lot of dropping our stigma about them, which is a really um, something we don't expect at you first. Know, I've read that you are, you're in Burlington, you're in Boston, you're in Manchester, you're in Portland. I think you read in, you're in Denmark. Obviously, you want to have as many <laughs> Me Too orchestras as possible. But I couldn't answer this question. I'm hoping you can. It seems she, she, that you've, she can. <laughs> you've captured something. Then I'll ask you. You've captured something with this that is transferable to other non-musical efforts to reduce the stigma of mental illness. Am I on to something or am I just... Is my hope exceeding real? Do you, do you know what I mean? Is there something about this that could be hmm. plopped into something that isn't an orchestra that would help in this mission that you two and your players are on? Well, that's outside of the scope of my daily thinking, mm -hmm. although I, I'm always trying to think about how we can best empower other people in other places However, to replicate this model. Uh, but the reason this model is so successful, I think, is because we don't have stigma-free zones in mm. our lives. Not at our offices, not within our families very often. <laughs> very good point. Um, so I think it could be done in other artistic settings or even a sports setting. I mean, why, why not? It's really you just set that intention when people walk through the door. This is what we're about, and this is what we're not about. Let me just say, the music is beautiful, and the whole effort is beautiful. It's a pleasure to meet you, Ronald. Thank you. Lots of luck Same with here. your work, and Carolyn. Yeah, we, thank you. Thank we really, you. Well, thank you for um, having us. I'm honored to have you. You know, the orchestra is is, has, um, is full of a lot of good musicians, um, and it's, it's growing. And we have a wonderful a violin section. And anyone who wants to join us in that, we're wide open. They're very welcome. Well, I won't be playing, but no, I will I be watching. <laughs> okay. For more information on the film, which is great, and upcoming screenings, head to metooorchestra.org. 